Hey all. My name is Dennis, and you are on the Den Electro channel. Today I will show you how to make a simple step-down switching converter on the AD84064Q chip. It is powered by voltage from 9 to 30 volts. The output voltage is stabilized at 5.2 volts. The maximum current strength is 0.7 amperes. Has short circuit protection. Claimed efficiency up to 81%. Operating frequency from 80 to 120 kilohertz. The maximum temperature is 60 degrees. Similar micro circuits are often found on car adapters for charging cell phones. Usually they are inserted into the cigarette lighter and have small dimensions. But this chip can be used not only in cars but also in everyday life. For example, in cases where it is necessary to obtain stabilized 5 volts from an unstabilized voltage, or from an overvoltage. Now, I will explain how to make this circuit, and at the end of the video I will tell you about its hidden chip, which is not indicated in the datasheet. This is what the converter circuit looks like. It is classic taken from the datasheet. On the left, 12 volts are supplied to the input of the micro circuit, and on the right, at the output, we get a stabilized 5 volts. The harness consists of only 5 parts. Capacitor C1 at 47 microfarads. The voltage is indicated as 25 volts, but this is provided that you feed the converter from 12. If you supply 30 volts, then the capacitor must be taken with a margin by 35, 50 volts. D1 is the signal LED. At the output of the fifth leg, there is a voltage of about 3 volts. Therefore, you can put any LED at least 3 millimeters at least 5. A quenching resistor is not required. D2 is a low dropout silicon Schottky diode. Instead, any other Schottky diode will do, and conventional rectifier or pulse diodes cannot be used here. L1 is a 240 microhenry inductor. It is not critical if the inductance is a little more or less. C2 is also a 220 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. Since the conversion is made mainly to power USB devices, a voltage divider is made here for their correct operation. Just in the place where the D plus and D minus contacts should be. Between the minus and the midpoint, here it turns out 3 volts and 2 volts between the plus. If you do not need this tire, then it can be removed. The seventh output is empty. The micro circuit does not use it. Also, if someone does not need a signal LED, then it is also not necessary to install it. In this case, the circuit will become simpler and take this form. Now I will show how the parts that we will use in the converter will look like. As I said, the heart of the circuit is the AD81064Q chip. It is made in a DIP8 case and has a very small size. I took a capacitor of 220 microfarads, 25 volts to the output of the converter. Diode 1 in 5819 looks like this. At the input I put 100 microfarads at 35 volts. For the throttle, I use this yellow ring with a white sidewall. Outer diameter in 13 millimeters, inner 8 and thickness 5 millimeters. I took the wire with a diameter of 0.2 millimeters and folded it second. Then he wound 80 turns. Then I take a tester. By connecting it to a homemade inductance meter. I connect the coil to the terminals. It turned out the required value of about 240 microhenries. If you don't already have such a device, I recommend you do it. The link will be in the upper right corner and in the description. After soldering all the components together, you get such a device. 
The dimensions turned out to be very compact, and I made the payment from cardboard. Then to test it in operation, I soldered the wires. There will be an input on the right and an output on the left. Let's see if the micro circuit produces the declared characteristics. As a load, I will use several light bulbs and two resistors connected in series. The right tester will show the current at the output of the converter, and the left one will show the voltage. From this device, I will supply power to the input of my converter. The display will also show voltage and current consumption. I turn it on. The light on the converter is on. I apply 12 volts to the input. The current consumption is 7 milliamps. The output is 5.2 volts. I connect the light bulbs. The voltage at the output of the converter did not subside, and the current consumption became 250 milliamps. At the input at 12 volts, the current is 139 milliamps. Converter efficiency is approximately 76%. I load the converter even more by adding resistance. The voltage at the output of the converter sank a little, and the current strength was 700 milliamps. And at the input, then 389 milliamps. Efficiency 76%. Then I raise the input voltage and set it to 20 volts. Nothing has changed at the output, but 235 milliamps at the input. The efficiency is also 76%. I increase the voltage to 25 volts, the current is 187 milliamps. And at the output of the converter, the voltage and current strength rose slightly. The efficiency was 79%. Now I lower the input voltage to 9 volts. The current at the input is almost half an ampere. Multimeters show that the voltage and current have become slightly less. When I disconnect the load, the voltage returns to normal again. If you connect only light bulbs, then the voltage is consistent with the passport data. Despite the indicated characteristics in the datasheet, the micro circuit can be used with an input voltage of 9 volts. After the micro circuit passed all the tests successfully, I decided to apply 30 volts to it. At the output, the converter keeps the voltage perfectly. The efficiency turned out to be almost 80%. Well, now the matter has come to the most important test of whether the converter charges a cell phone to the output of the converter. I connected the USB connector, inserted a wire into it. I connect. When my phone is discharged, it consumes about 1 ampere, but now there is not much charge. And so the current is small, only 450 milliamps. And now I'll see how the converter behaves during a short circuit. The light bulb goes out, the voltage drops to half a volt and the current sags further by 1.3 amperes. And now I'll talk about her hidden chip. Although the data sheet says that the microcircuit can only produce 5 volts, actually it is not. If you add a circuit of just one part, then the converter can be made adjustable. Small changes are required to make the circuit adjustable. Pay attention to the third output of the microcircuit. He is responsible for feedback. Now it is connected to the output directly but if you run it through a variable resistor, you can adjust the voltage. I put two 5 kilo ohm resistors, but you can put one 10 kilo ohm. At the input, as in the previous test, 
I applied 29 volts. The output turned out to be 5.6 volts. If you unscrew both and the regulator to the maximum, then the output will be almost 28 volts. Again, I will make 5.6 volts and connect the resistance. The voltage did not sag, but the current is half an ampere. Slowly turn the regulator to increase the voltage. When the voltage reaches almost 7 volts, the converter turns off. If you connect a slightly smaller load in the form of several light bulbs, then the picture is completely different. The voltage rises a little more, reaches 11 volts, and everything turns off. And if you connect only one light bulb, then the voltage can be increased even more. from 14 volts or more. If you like the video, then put likes. Click on the bell so as not to miss new videos. Subscribe to my channel. As usual, if something is not clear to you, ask questions in the comments and bye-bye.